Um, you know, I think he's going to, he'll probably tell you a little bit about it, but he's going to basically, he's looking at being an agent right through there. So, you know, he just graduated through, uh, just graduated from, where'd you graduate from? UCLA. UCLA. So basically he's got his uh, MBA. So again, he's, uh, he's out there making it happen, right? His, you know, his basically passion is awesome. He's, he's on fire right now, right? So um, I put this little tribute together for him. <laughs> You got to tell you about Peyton Manning, right? My boy, basically through here, so super excited. So he's going to basically, uh, he's going to come out and give us a little something now. So you guys put your hands together for uh, Mr. Derek Cox, right? So... So Derek, real quick, man, I know you're humble. You're humble a little behind right through here, right? How many years you play in the NFL? What teams you play for? Give them a little background on you too. Okay. So they can understand the importance of how simple how the lesson looks. I've heard this before. I freaking love it, dude. You yeah. guys are gonna be on fire. Okay, so for myself, uh, my career was over a span of seven years, and I was drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I was drafted in the third round, played there, left from there, came out here and played with the Chargers. And after I finished with the Chargers, went on and had a brief stint with Minnesota, Baltimore, and then I finished my last year with New England. And after I finished uh, football, during the midst of playing football, I knew that what I wanted to do was become a sports agent. So during the midst of that and, and everything that I experienced, that was my goal after, I, I knew that was my goal after I would retire from football. And so moving on, once I got done, that's what I applied for. Applied for grad school, got into UCLA, did the program, just finished, just graduated in June, and walking away with the NBA. So that's just a part of the steps that you have to take if you want to represent players in the NFL. You have to have a graduate degree. You can't just come with a bachelor's degree. You have to have a graduate degree of some sort. It could be a JD, it could be an MBA. And so for myself, I chose to do the NBA because I don't intend on practicing law and afterwards. Any lawyers, any, 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 any <laughs> JD, that's not me. I don't intend on doing that. So for me, business, that's why I like talking with Dustin because he's well-versed with business and being here amongst you guys, cool opportunity. And so, yeah, stepping into it. I'm actually studying right now for the CFL examination to represent players in the Canadian Football League. So that's one of the aspects that'll be a part of my representation and being able to represent clients, CFL this year, NFL next year, and just gonna build it out. You know, I wanna represent players, coaches, and then do sports marketing as well. So gotta be the full gambit to constructing the sports agency. And Dustin is real big on just helping me on that aspect because hey, just like you guys do sales, I would be doing the same thing. I'm gonna have to go to a player and be able to sell myself. And so hearing this, I might, I might have to just come and sit in on meeting. What is this a, a every Monday? Every Monday, I might have to come just to get some tidbits. I mean, the stuff that was just buzzing around was very fascinating to me, and, and I'm, I'm really excited. So I appreciate this opportunity to come here and speak with you guys, and you know, just share my story and and, and, and what I've gone through and, and and things that have impacted me. Before we start, who in here was who's the Derek in here? Is he? Yeah. Okay. That's a that's. That's a good night. You spell, I've never seen it spelled that DC way. By DC, man. Really? Okay. Yeah. I've never seen it spelled that way, but I, I really like that, man. Uh, we'll dive in. So two fingers up and then this line. Okay, cool. Let me set this here. That'd be cool. Okay, guys. Oh, that's somebody. Okay, I'm blocking them up. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's slide it. Well, I don't want to slide it up yet. So let's dive in. Here we go. When I was in elementary school and, and middle school and high school, there was only one award that I can recall getting at the academic award ceremony. Every year, I can recall getting this award. And can y'all guess what award I received? I, and look, I wasn't a valedictorian. So what award do y'all think I got every year at the academic award ceremony? No. Perfect attendance. See that? Did, did y'all see my slide early? Somebody saw my slide early, didn't they? 
So the only award that I ever recall getting every single year was perfect attendance. And that was because, look, my parents, it was already understood. Look, you wake up, you don't feel good. I, I don't want to hear it. You're going to school. There wasn't going to be, ah, my throat's a little sore. I don't feel good. You weren't going to pull that on my parents. It was, hey, you're going to school. So we knew waking up, you are going to school. And I just recall that being an award that I always would receive. And I, on a roll valedictorian, never. And I would even argue that this is actually a better award than being the valedictorian, than making the honor roll. Because look, what it says about you is you showed up every day. I mean, we all had that math class that was kicking out behind. We all had that pre-algebra course that you wanted to run away from. And you showed up every day. You didn't let it punk you and you stay in the fight and you grinded it out. And that was something that I always recall just doing is staying in the fight and showing up every day, no matter how I felt. Because just because you had perfect attendance doesn't mean you felt good when you showed up. It doesn't mean that everything went your way. That means you didn't have a flat tire or something got in the way. You showed up. But as a valedictorian, it doesn't say the same thing. Who are any valedictorians in here? Ah, okay. There, yeah, yeah, valid key. Okay. Hey. Well, so, you know, I don't, I don't want to disrespect the man, you know? He's a valid tour. You know? Yeah, I'm going to see soon. He was on top of the look. It doesn't say, when I look at a valedictorian, Hey, it doesn't say that he was necessarily perfect, that he that he showed up every day. Because, see, sometimes that valedictorian, all it may mean is that they were smart and they made good grades. But they may have been the person that was like, look, I got this under control. I don't need to show up today. You miss any days there? Wow. He was perfect. He, 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 was, he was, look, he was, he, he's above and beyond. You know, he's a different breed. He's a different creature. But some valedictorians, see, they may have just been like, hey, I, I, I Hey, I got, I have this under control. I don't need to show up today so I can miss a couple of days. Anybody remember in school when they would call roll? And y'all remember that? Oh, that's old school. I don't know if they do that anymore, but they would call roll. Uh, what's your name? Jessica. Jessica. And then yeah. Nick. Cynthia. And Cynthia. So, so if I, okay, so if I'm calling roll and, 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 and just act it out for me. And I, okay, okay. Uh, Jessica. Here. Nick. Here. Cynthia. Here. Okay, good. That's what we normally say. Now we're going to switch it up real quick. Instead of saying here, I want you to choose another word that we will all, that we sometimes will use. Are you ready? Jessica? Present. Boom. Present. Present. That's the word right there. Present. And see, present is what I want to focus on because, see, there was a time for me where I wasn't present to a football workout that I should have been present to because the present, that's the only way you can get perfect attendance. Like I had to be there to say present like Jessica did in order for me to get the perfect attendance award. But there was a day though where I wasn't living by this. I wasn't living right. And when I stepped into uh, my high school football workout, I missed because I wasn't present. I got you, slide it right here. Thank you. Okay, so y'all probably can't find me. Maybe you can. Somebody, somebody. Y'all, that's embarrassing. Who said AJ? That's the worst looking guy. <laughs> Moose, we called him Moose. That was his name, Moose. That's me right there. The cleanest guy, come on now, I got the, the wristbands on, everything. <laughs> 88, who said 88? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was the hardest hitter, 88. He was the hardest hitter of, uh, of all the guys, but no, he, he's the worst looking guy on the on the, on the ball. Anyway, so, so this is in my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina. This is home of the East Carolina University Pirates. Anybody ever heard of them? Maybe, football fans, maybe perhaps. Okay, so purple and gold. And this is the school that, you know, we all, uh, in my hometown, you wanted to go here. You wanted to play ball for this school. It's a Division I A football team 
you know, big deal. David Garrard, anybody know that name? Football name, David Garrard, owner, Chris Johnson, C, uh, uh, 2000, what was he, C, CJ2, 2K, where he ran rush for 2,000 yards. Okay, he, these guys played at East Carolina University. And so in my hometown and for my high school team, I'm going into the ninth grade. And my older brother, Travis, he's going into the 12th grade. And so every year of my high school, we went to this football camp at East Carolina University. And it's just a football camp of, you, you, you're going to do the whole game. You're going to compete seven on seven versus the other. There's no pads. It's just helmets. We compete against other teams that come from either within the state or nearby states. They come, they compete. The, 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 uh, the scouts there at East Carolina University, they use this as an opportunity for them to scout talent. They're trying to see, okay, is there any talent locally that we might miss? We can find them at this camp. And so my high school, we, go, we would go there every year. And this year that we're going to it, uh, my brother's going into his senior year. Travis is a stud athlete, like Travis 5'9", but can jump out the, out the, he can jump out the building. And he, he was the type that he could just wake up and give you a 4-4, four, 4-4 four, four, four flat in the 40. And, and, and I wasn't that same way. I had to put in some work in order to get myself in that type of like condition and athleticism. But Travis was gifted that way. And so Travis went to the camp and he balls out, does extremely well at the camp. And they offer him a scholarship on the spot. And like, hey, we want to give you a full scholarship to play football here at East Carolina University. And so for me, I see how everybody celebrate my brother, how they like, wow, you know, this is this is tremendous because we all want to go to East Carolina University, not just to, to us as players, but the students as well. So my brother's getting celebrated and congratulated for what he did and receiving this full scholarship. And he accepted to go to East Carolina University. And so at that moment, I made it my goal. I said, I'm going to get me a full scholarship to play football in college. So this and this this is the point that I made it. I look nothing like, I don't even have a calf muscle. You see that? I don't even have a calf muscle. I don't even have a calf muscle. Like, I'm not equipped necessarily to be a collegiate football player, but I made the decision right then and there. And that was my first time even knowing what a scholarship was. I'm going into the ninth grade. I had no clue what a scholarship was until my brother received one. I was like, wow, I can go to college for free playing football? And, and, and it was such a big deal. Parents were like, wow, like, I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to school student loans. So that I was like, wow, that's something big and, and that's a huge accomplishment. So that was something that I was gunning for. And moving on, I'll fast forward to my junior year. Going into my junior year, it's the summer again. And at my high school, we had summer heat workouts. That's what they were called, summer heat workouts. We had a workout at 8 a.m. and we had one at 4, 4 p.m. And there would be a lift and there would be a run. And you had a certain number you had to make. There'd be 40 workouts total out the whole summer that you could make. And you only had to make 24 of them. So there was a little room for you to miss some. But one day, I'm, I'm, I know that I'm gonna hit my, I know I'm gonna hit my 24, so I'm not sweating it. And my dad comes, he always wakes me up in the morning. My dad worked in construction, you know, 6'3", Navy dude, uh, former Navy, 24 years. You know, just, just a thick brother, just country, country just, a, just, a, just a country dude. He comes, knocks on my door. So are you ready? You ready? And I pull the covers back and I'm like, Dad, like, I'm good today. Like, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just stay in the bed today. I, I, I'm going to hit my workouts. I'm on pace to hit my workouts. I'm going to chill. Boom, I roll the covers back over. <laughs> I'm, 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 and and it's, it's a wrap. I don't hear my dad walk away, though. And so I pull the covers back and look up. And I'm just looking at my pops. And you should see the way he look, he's looking at me. But he doesn't say anything. He just, he just walked away. And I laid in the bed, staring at the ceiling. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, was he, was he like, disgusted? Was he disappointed? What was he? And, and I had to check myself. Because I was like, okay, here I am saying that I want to play football in college. Here I am saying that this is my goal. This is what I'm going for. This is what I'm trying to do. But yet, here's an opportunity for me to go and get better and to help my team get better, and I'm not taking advantage of it. 
I'm just going, I'm, I'm just laying in the bed while my teammates are there working out, getting it in, getting better. At that moment, I made a decision laying in the bed. I said, you know what? I'm not going to miss another workout. And I did finished out, finished out the rest of that junior year, that junior summer, got my workouts. But the, but the real deal was going into my senior year. See, I took it. I said, I'm going to take it to another notch. One, I'm not going to miss a single workout. So I'm going to hit all 40. But additionally, I'm going to come twice a day. So I'm going to come at eight and hit them with the lift and the run. But then I'm going to come in the afternoon and hit them off with the run again. Because see, none of the boys want, who, who, any football players in here? None of the boys wanted the conditioning. Yeah, you be sitting around all day at school, nervous about conditioning at the practice. Just nervous. Nobody wanted to do conditioning, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and do the conditioning because, for one, I know that that's, that's the hardest thing to do. But then additionally, I know that that's going to increase my game and help me be better for my team. Because I'm going to be out there on the field, and I'm going to be a different type of cornerback because I'm in such better condition than the rest of the players. The team ain't going to have to worry about me. Hey, we need to put a safety over top of Derek because he might get beat deep. No, they knew I was good. Put, 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 put eight in the box. We can put eight in the box because we, Derek is good over here on the corner. Go load up the box and, and send the whole lineup to stop the run because he's good out here on the corner. That's what I was, that's the mentality that I went into that senior year and it paid off for me. Ended up going on and getting the scholarship, full scholarship, William and Mary and the whole shebang. But the thing that I want to hit on is the fact that that day that I didn't go to the workout my junior year, that day that I didn't go, I'll never get that day back. And I don't know how that day would have impacted me or my teammates. Like, what would that day have been like had I showed up? Coach call, Coach call roll. And I wasn't there to stay present. I was absent. All because I was selfish. I, 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 I was feeling sorry for myself. I felt a little sore. I felt a little good about what I had accomplished. Ego was a little inflated. And so I was absent. Couldn't have been present. And that's what I want to focus on. I want to focus on that word present. So let's look at this word present. When you, when you break that word apart, you got that prefix, pre. And in Latin, that means before. And we, and we see this in the English language all the time. You know, who, who got the iPhone 13? Anybody in here? You may have pre-ordered it. You, you put in the pre-order and you got the iPhone 13 before it was even sent out. You, you were just on deck waiting. It wasn't even, it wasn't, they ain't even manufactured it yet. And you're on deck waiting for it, pre order some of, some of us know about uh, uh, pre, premeditated murder. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but we know about it. And that's where you thought out a plan to kill somebody in advance. You thought it out in advance. And so when we look at the word present and we split it apart, we see pre-sent. Pre-sent. You were sent before. You didn't wait until today to decide. You were sent before. You made the decision beforehand that you were going to show up today. That's, a, that's like, for, for instance, today. I didn't decide. I didn't wake up and say, I'm going to show up uh, today because it's sunny and, 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 and I want to be here. It ain't even sunny outside, but it just for just me. I've made the decision beforehand. Even anybody in here, you guys made the same decision. You made a decision beforehand that, hey, you're going to show up today and be present. But you can't wake up and, and, and make the decision. Like, you can't wake up today and say, I'm going I'm to wait and decide what today is about to be like, how I'm going to step into my today. Am I going to wake up and this, it might be cloudy outside and, you, and that might change your whole mood just because you, you decided on the day of. And that's exactly what I did when I missed the workout in high school. I woke up, I was sore, I felt good about myself, I felt comfortable, I was coasting, I was on track, and then I made a selfish decision. I said, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna sit it out. 
all because beforehand I didn't make the decision. But once I made the decision in my in my in my yesterday, I arrived to my 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 today as a different creature. Valedictorian, perfect attendance. Like that's how I came to the day. That's how I'm approaching it. And that's all because beforehand you make a decision. And we do that because you cannot decide on the day of how you want to show up to work. Because if you wait, if you wait until the day of, you, you may make a selfish decision. You may make a decision that, that is self-serving for you, yourself, personally, not the team. And we all can be guilty of doing that. Uh, when you guys are here, you, you, you're working as a team. And when you're with your family, you're working as a team. You're on a team at that time. And whenever you are on a team, this picture right here is me in college. That's our head coach in the middle. When you, whenever you're on a team, you have to make decisions that are best for the team. That's not new news. We all know that. But this, may, this, this really stands out to me now. At, at this phase in life, because I get, I, I've had my first head coach experience. Any coaches in here? Anybody coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't done it, I advise you to. Like, just co head. You know what I mean? If you don't have any kids and it's going to be weird for you to be out coaching kids, get a co head, get a co head coach job and just, just assist. But it's fascinating because it's really opened up my eyes to. That phrase where it says, treat others how you want to be treated. And that's been, a, that's, been a, that's been around for ages. Ages. But treat others how you want to be treated. It's come alive to me here recently, coaching my son's soccer team. A bunch of U8 boys that I'm coaching in soccer. Our team name is Prime Line. I'm, I'm real proud of that. And we're four and what? Four and one right now. And it's come alive to me. That aspect of coaching, it's like a business when you coach a team because I get, a, I get a load of players. I have some players that are strong, some players that are not as strong. And I have to work with what I have to try to win the game. I can't go get anybody else. I'll have what I have. And I'm working with them to try to win. And then I got the competition that I'm going against, that I'm competing against, and, and I got to strategize against them. How, how am I going to beat this team? They've got some good players on their squad. It's, who's the competitor for y'all? Y'all got any competitors in the in, – in, in, no match, huh? It's, it's, yeah, that's it. It's only, it's only yourself. You compete with yourself every day. And trying to figure out how can we strategize a game plan to do our best, to win our game. And coaches are doing that. And now that I get to see it from the coach's perspective – the coach is so heavily dependent upon his players and what they do. And it's not just about the organized practices that the coach sets up. Because how many of us know that if the only time, if the only time Derek was studying was when the teacher advised him to, he probably, he wouldn't have became the student that he is. It took him doing extra reps outside of that. And we see that in anything. If I wanted to, Steph Curry is taking extra shots after practice. He's not just shooting when practice is organized. Kobe Bryant wasn't just shooting when practice was organized. It took him doing stuff outside of that in order to help his team. And therefore the coach, the coach could rely on him differently than he could on other players. All because the player, the player said, you know what? I have this coach. This coach, all he can do is call plays. Dustin, all Dustin can do is call plays. And you guys are the playmakers. You got to go out and make the plays. And you might not even like Dustin, but you can empathize. You can see it. You, you can see it from Dustin's shoes and be like, if I had to be the boss, if I had to be the director, if I had to lead a team, I would want my teammates to be out trying to make the best plays that they can to help out the team, regardless of how we feel about the coach, regardless of that. It's, it's putting myself in their shoes and realizing that, hey, if they 
Because I don't want my boss, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want the head coach to have to lose his job. Coaching is hard. Like coaches get transferred, relocated, lose their job, all because of their performance just wasn't right on their team. Lose the paycheck, all because of the performance on the team. And so as a as a player, and 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 now being a coach, I get to see that, and I'm seeing it from a different perspective, and it's really changing the way that I see. Hey, you have to treat others how you want to be treated in the corporate arena, on the football field. It all works the same. Who's who? Who's in? Who? 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 Am, who, who, am, who do I want to? Who? Who could I be? Who am I? That's my boss. I could be in his same position. May not like him. But I'm gonna try. I'm, but I can see it through his eyes, and I'm gonna do what I can. I'm gonna do my part to help the team. Because if I were sitting in the same shoes, that's what I would want done. Let's finish off with this perfect attendance, guys. So every day, life is call and roll. And when I talk about us being absent and not showing up. I gave you my example, why I was absent. And in life, for any of us, every day when life is called and roll, you, you're either absent or present. And that's simply about a mindset. The mindset that you come into today is all dependent upon what you decided yesterday. And the mindset that I step into to my today it cannot be simply about me. Because when it was, I just made a selfish decision. I said, I feel good. I, I have a, I'm a little sore, but I'm going to make my workouts. Let me sit out today. All because I was self-centered. I was self-focused. I was self-interested. I was self-preserving. And when we get that way, it puts you in a compromising position to where you will make a decision. It only benefits you. You got a team here, you got a family at home where the, the type of decisions that you make, it affects more people than just yourself. And that is one of the keys to being present because if I'm gonna have perfect attendance, I have to be present to every day that I, that's coming at me. Like the, the, the game of life is every day. It's coming regardless of whether you like it or not. And so what's your attendance gonna look like on the day? Because see, an absent man, he just, he just wants to do as much as he can to slide through the program. That's exactly what I was doing, just sliding through the program. Let me get 24 and, and, and check off the box and say, I did what, I, I did what Coach asked. That's what the absent man will do. The absent man, he is only thinking about serving himself. How can he get his? How can she get hers? That's it. They're, they're not thinking about serving others. It's just self-serving. It's just me, 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 me. No team. Me, 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 me. That's what the self-serving and that's what the absent man will do. But the present man, that's a different breed. If you're going to have perfect attendance, you got to be the present man. Where you present every day to what is throwing at you, regardless of how you feel, because you made a decision in the past with what you're going to be committed to, and you stay true to those commitments long after you, long after the feelings have worn off. Because we know how it is, we get geeked up. You might leave out of this message and be geeked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be present, and then it can wear off. Stay true to the commitment long after you've made them. No matter what natural abilities you have, it's effort and attitude when it comes to perfect attendance. It's a lot. And if you step into every day with the effort and attitude to help set you apart, you're not just relying on your natural skills and your gifts and abilities. It's easy. Oh, you know, I can I can get I can do 73% in my sleep. I'm maxing out. Bring your effort and your attitude. One that's saying, hey, I'm going, I'm gonna for perfect attendance. Not just for me and not for me just to prosper. Not for me to just have prosperity. But this is gonna make everybody else on my team, my family, this is gonna help them prosper. And I'm gonna put them in a position to succeed.
Let's get that perfect attendance. That's my time. Thank you, guys. Your little DC pick here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is an eight. <laughs> All right. Great job, man. Great job. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Give a round of applause. Dang. Electric, right? Yeah. Electric. You know, he didn't mention that he just, you know, last year just got uh, basically inducted into the William Mary Hall of Fame, which is a college. He got a full ride scholarship.